Today I've got a really cool and weird way of using the tape modeling plugins, the Kramer tape and the J37. And uh, I actually learned this from one of my buddies who does records, like, you know, kind of grunge records. And what we use typically tape for, tape modeling, is to recreate that beautiful warmth, a little bit of the harmonic distortion, some of the cool compression that we used to get back in the days when we were spooling two inch and one inch and all those kinds of tapes. So I've got a little piece here from uh, my pilot Blade of Honor, a real high level action kind of scene. I'm gonna turn these off and just play it for you au naturel, give you a feel for what it sounds like. And that gives you a little feel. And then I'm gonna turn both of these on. Now this is Kramer tape here. Let me zoom in, I'll show, oh, you can see it here. Whoops, there, Kramer tape, and then J37 after it, in series. Check it out. Let me turn these on, because so, I like to see them spinning. Now, it may be very subtle to hear, especially if you're listening on you know, earbuds or a computer speaker or something like this. But what it's actually doing is adding a little distortion, a little, cutting off some of the high frequencies, adding a little low. And each one of these has its own way of doing it. In fact, let's just take a look at the Kramer tape just for a second here. Zoom in. It's got a record and playback level. So as you turn up the record level, the playback level goes down if you've got them linked, which I recommend that you do. So you can really overdrive it if you want. Um, and then you have how fast do you want the tape to go. I like the 15 IPS setting just because the seven and a half, although it's a beautiful setting, it does kind of create more artifacts than I usually like. I like having the bias, uh, how hard does it want the tape to be hit on over. And then flux can be somewhere in here. I like it there. Wow and flutter. I'm not a real fan of how this particular wow and flutter sounds. So I keep it on the minimum. But the noise, this is self noise. And you probably can't hear it until I play, but it's really a really, it's a nice sounding noise. And why would you want to add noise? Well, studies showed back in the 80s when CDs came out that uh, people were complaining about CDs because they sounded too clean. And they did some studies to find out that the human brain actually likes to hear noise as a part of its recording. In fact, there's always self-noise in your hearing mechanism. So I add a little noise, that it's analog noise, because it's wonderful. I don't use any feedback or any print-through delay or anything like that, and certainly the low-pass filter I keep up as high as possible. And we get this really nice sound. Off. I initially, my first tape uh, modeler that I ever bought was the J37, and it's got all kinds of fun plugins, fun bits to look at. It has the same in and out kind of record in and play as the Kramer does, just in a different spooler, but check it out. does the same kind of thing. But here you have different kinds of tape that you can choose. You can choose a really old kind of tape or a more modern kind of tape. And then of course the IPS speed is where it really starts showing up the differences in tape. because I'm not really hearing that crunchy distortion. But we'll keep it at 15. I also like to have the bias at plus five, again, really driving the tape strongly like we do over here on the over. And then um, I like 
to have the saturation down because I don't need to add any more crunch than I'm already adding by driving these meters really strongly. And the noise, again, the really nice sounding noise, I turn up a little bit higher than the default. And I leave the flutter around zero. But the wow, let me show you what wow sounds like. It's, it's wild, it's wow. And you're like, well, what the heck is that? Why is that making that noise? Well, you know, at 15 inches per second, you know, it's not spooling that tape exactly precisely. You know, every time it goes around, there's going to be a little fluctuations in pitch. And they're really, really, you know, on a good machine that you can't hardly tell. But they're there. And again, your brain is used to going, oh, yeah, I like that analog feel. So I turn the rate down a little bit. And I make the depth very slight. so that I get just a little bit of that algorithm working. Um, I had this, and what I used to do is run two J37s, because I loved having two of them together and really get that crunchy sound. But my buddy said, hey man, use Kramer and J37 together, and it creates, a, you know, it's like um, the best of all worlds, because each one of these has their own unique sound. But when you run them together, it really makes a wonderful analog representation. It gets a little crunchy if you drive it too hard, so I'd suggest having a compressor beforehand just to balance out a little bit of those you know, strongs and lows. But check it out one more time. Off. And you know me, I always like misusing software. And if you're using any kind of tape modeling for your mixes, and you know, this is for post-production, I'm not even talking music, I'm talking post-production, let us know about it on the cinemasound.com blog and forum. And you know, share with us your settings, share with us what you're doing, and help us all win together. Until then, we'll see you in post. Even if you're